walkthrough video of a Canon FTB. So first of all, I'm gonna take the lens off and let's uh, talk about this camera real quick. So it is a all metal body construction Canon 35 millimeter SLR released in 1971. This was released in 1971. It has a few features, but it's pretty basic. So let's go over it. Um, it has some interesting features, but yet still remains fairly simplistic. So primarily it is a mechanical camera. There is electrical circuitry used only for the metering system, which is kind of rudimentary, similar to a K1000 and or Spotmatic. Uh, it has a self-timing mechanism here, which is a 10 second timer. It's very loud, very loud. It's, yeah, very loud. Um, and then also it has depth of field preview. It has a logging mechanism, so you can hold it there if needed. And yeah, and you can also put the self-timer for less than 10 seconds if needed. Um, also on the front of the camera here is a flash sync port, which is disguised nicely behind this little flippy tab thing, which is a technical term, a flippy tab. On the bottom, there is a tripod socket, as well as the film rewind button. On the top, very simple look here. You just have your on, your off, and your check. The check is not an actual like it won't stop on the check, you have to push it down. And on here, it should say that you need to have the ASA 100 and the shutter speed at 60 to do the check, but this is kind of rubbed off. But I believe that that's what that says there. I'm close if it's not correct. Also on the top over here, you have your standard shutter speed selecting mechanism, which ranges from bulb to one, one, one thousandth of a second with the flash sync speed being at 60. And in order to shoot at flash sync, you make sure that this is off. Um, there's a hot shoe there, so that'll work. And then also, as I mentioned previously, there is a uh, flash sync port in the front. To change the ASA, you lift up on this ring here and you move it around as such. Um, here's your shutter button. And if you notice, there's a red L and there's an A. If you have it on the L, it will not fire. If you have it on the A, it will fire. So that's kind of nice, a little shutter lock. And then also it has a screwed input for a shutter release cable. The winding mechanism, very simple. The frame counter is right there. On this side, you have the battery port. It's simple to just use a nickel, get in there and loosen it up. And it takes something like a 625A, which is a 1.5 volt battery. It's a little thicker than a normal button cell, but it will fit in there. And the positive side goes up, negative side goes down. The viewfinder is fairly simple in the bottom bottom left corner there's a small number indicating the shutter speed you're firing at and then on the right side there is a needle and a small lollipop thing that goes up and down okay so the needle is moved by the light that's coming in and the lollipop is moved by the aperture that you've selected via that so you want to make sure that the needle lines into the middle of the lollipop in order to fire at correct exposure um, opening up the back, we have a very simple mechanism here. We just have a quick loading feature on some of these. I don't know for sure if all FTBs are QL, but if it's denoted here that it's a QL, then it has a quick load system, which is this thing right here, common in the Canonet QL17 G3s, QL17 being quick load 17. Okay, so I cut my own film lead here because the other one wasn't going into the camera properly. So don't mind the chaos. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and let's work on loading it. So simply you put 
the canister in like that. And as you can see, there's a little, little diagram right there, kind of showing you what you should do. And what it's saying is just keep the film lead right there, close it, and that'll add weight down to it, basically. So long as this weighted mechanism of the quick loading system is sitting on top of the film lead, it will push it into the spindle and you'll be able to load the film properly. So, but some people, I'm not gonna say names because it's many people and I believe I've even done it once myself, have not loaded the film properly and you end up getting a blank roll. So, something to be wary of. Uh, but it's the same rewind mechanism. Obviously when you're doing this, you wanna keep the door closed and you just press down on this button to unhinge or to release the spindle from the advanced system and you just rewind the film. I'm doing it with the back open so I can make sure that I don't rewind the film back into the canister, thus losing my test roll. But <clears throat> that's basically how it operates. It's a fairly simple design. The camera also, as you can tell, has a cloth uh, curtain, which is nice. And that's essentially it. But you can usually find these for pretty inexpensive, but the problem is a lot of the light meters on them don't work very well. This one happens to work, so it's not like by and large all of them don't work, but I've seen a lot that have unreliable light meters and then also on slower speeds, sometimes the gears get a little gummed up and they might not fire accurately. So those are two things that are pretty common to look out for. Also, because it's a metal camera, there's usually a lot of dings and dents in the body. Um, and normally that doesn't really affect things, but if you have too many dings around this area, it's really hard to get this battery door out. So I would keep that in mind. Other than that, it's a pretty sturdy, sturdy camera. Um, I would recommend it if you're trying to get into photography or if you are going on, say like, uh, going on like a long trip and you need something that's robust and reliable, I would definitely take an FTB. Um, I think that something like this works just as well and it's much more reliable than something that's more electrical um, in in function. I, I would say that this is something that's a little bit more reliable and the fact that it is completely mechanical and a lot of, you can even shoot it without the light meter and just use an external light meter or something like that or the Sunny 16 rule, which I'll be honest to this day. And like, I know it, I know the Sunny 16 thing. It makes no sense to me, genuinely. Like it just makes no sense. I've got a little app on my phone that's a spot meter. I got an ambient light meter. I would just use that as opposed to try and guess because I'm already trying to guess all this other stuff. So anyway, I think that'll just about do it for this video. This is a Canon FTB walkthrough. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions you can comment below uh, or email me and uh, yeah, leave it there and I will catch you on the next one.